Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. In today's video, we're gonna show you guys how to perform a full system backup on Windows Server 2025. Before we get started with today's video, if you guys are interested in purchasing Windows Server, remote desktop licenses, Windows 10, Windows 11, Microsoft Office, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll have those links down below. So without further ado, let's jump in. All right guys, so we are here on Windows Server on the desktop and we first wanna start by accessing our server manager. You can find this in the pinned applications or you can search for it, or in most cases, it will start automatically upon boot. So once we're here, we'll find our tools in the very top right. And at the very bottom of this list, we'll see Windows Server Backup. Let's click to open that and we'll quickly go over the navigation on this page. So notice that we have a pane here on the left. I'll drag that out a little bit. So we have our Windows Server Backup Local. Local Backup is underneath that. We've got our middle section here where it actually displays the information. And then we also have a little action pane here on the right. So this is going to give us some additional action options. And maybe I'll scoot this one here so we can see that a little better. Right clicking on any of right clicking on the Windows Server Backup Local, we have a few options here. Now, as we can see, Windows Server Backup is not installed on this computer. So we're gonna have to backtrack a step here to actually go ahead and install that. So we'll go back to our server manager homepage. We'll click manage, add roles and features. And we'll click through. We want the role-based or feature-based installation in this case. Select your server from the server pool and we can click next on the server roles. And what we're looking to install here is the feature and that is Windows Server Backup. So we'll check that, we'll click next, restart destination if required automatically. Be sure to only check that if you've already saved any sensitive data. We'll click yes and we'll click install. We'll come back once this is done. All right, guys, so we just restarted the server. I'm gonna go into tools again. Let's go back down to Windows Server Backup. Now, if I right click on local backup, it's showing that we can perform a single backup here. So if I right click, see backup schedule, backup once, recover, configure performance settings, etc. Given that I don't have backup history here since we just installed the Windows Server Backup feature, we're not seeing information here in the middle, but this would contain our previous backups. For example, we would see backups here and the time that they were taken. And then right clicking or double clicking into those would give us additional information. We would also see our last backup available right here. Let's go ahead and proceed with the full backup. So I'm going to click to backup once here on the right, on the action pane, and that's going to bring up our backup once wizard. So we'll go ahead and click next. And for our backup configuration, in this case, again, we want to go with the full server. And that is what's recommended. We could also choose custom volumes or files for backup. This next part is important because we get to specify the destination type. For example, we can save it to a local drive, or if we want a remote backup, which would be a good practice in a lot of scenarios, we have that option here as well. All right guys, so for the location here, I have a mapped network drive that I set up in a previous tutorial, and I'm gonna select that as where I want to save this backup to. Now this inherit option here has to do with permissions, and as it's telling us, this option makes the backup accessible to everybody who has access to the specified remote shared folder. In that case, this is what I wanna do, so I'll press next. Okay, so I was actually copying the share drive path incorrectly. So quickly run through that, I opened my command prompt and I ran the command net space use. This is gonna show us the mapping between drive letters and network paths. So by copying this path here, I had the correct share path for my share folder. So with the inherit option selected, as we discussed earlier, I'll press next. And then here we have confirmation, let's go ahead and hit backup and we'll come back once this is done. All right, at this point, I'll go ahead and click close. So now in, under our local backup pane here in the middle, we can see the last backup, and we can see that it was also successful. So I can double click into this. That's gonna show me more information, such as the data size, how much data was transferred, start and end time, et cetera. And then it's also gonna show us again that backup location. So I'll press okay. And if we wanted to restore to this backup, I could press recover. This is going to give us a recovery wizard. We can see that the backup was stored on this server. We'll click next. And now we can see that backup that we just made. Again, if I clicked through this, we can do files and folders. We could do the system state. We can do applications. There are several options for what we want to recover. And clicking next, we've got items that we can select. Here we have the available items. I can hit next again. Here we have access to our recovery destination. We can also create a copy so that we have both versions or we can choose to overwrite or do not recover existing items and click next. And the last step would be to hit recover. 
All right, guys, so that's gonna do it for today's video. If you have any questions about anything we went over, feel free to drop those in the comments below, and we'll get back with you as soon as we can. Again, if you're interested in purchasing genuine Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll have those links down below. As our channel continues to grow, we're constantly looking for new video topic ideas. If you have any ideas of your own, we'd love to hear what those are. Most viewer commented video requests get made into actual videos on our channel. Lastly, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it helps to support our channel. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.